Hey, everybody. I'm so happy to be singing for the Parlor Room in Northampton, Massachusetts tonight. I'd like to thank you all for joining me, um, especially the folks up north. I really loved living up there a few years back, and I wrote uh, most of the songs to my on my first record in Northampton, Massachusetts, and recorded up there with Signature Sounds with Mark Thayer. So um, it's a little, it feels like a little bit of a homecoming to be playing some songs for my latest record for you. And uh, the new record's called Song to a Refugee. And this first song is called Humble. So I wrote my last record um, largely during the summer of 2018 when uh, there was such devastating news from our borders of the separation of children from their parents and, um, and just, uh, you know, how punitive everything was. Um, and this, this was a story that, um, that actually comes from a friend of mine who was a refugee from Syria when she was seven years old. She came to America and um, she had a bunch of brothers and sisters and parents and none of them spoke English. Um, and 
her teenage, her sister was a teenager. She was only seven, but her sister was a teenager. And I talked to her about her experience and, you know, she had left, um, she had left a life. And, uh, and she, she actually said to me, it was the life I left behind. So this is, uh, this is from Maha. see a little dog behind me. Um, I'll bring her out later so she can say hello to you. Right now she's a little bit upset because I'm playing guitar. And when I play the guitar, Birdie knows that not much is going to happen. So she goes to sleep. Anyway, so... So it's funny how songs change over time um, for me, the ones that I've written. Um, the meaning, you know, in terms of what's happening. So I guess I was thinking about a little bit about the election when uh, I was practicing this one, just kind of going over it. Um, it's called Willow Tree, and there's a line about vipers. Ain't no, it starts out, ain't no vipers at my door, so. I hope that's true. I hope that stays true for a while. And our present government, which is, uh, you know, a bit of hope. Ain't no 
old vipers at my door. Ain't no vipers at my door. No silver tongue strangers come round no more. Ain't no vipers at my door. I should know I've seen my shame. judgment come I was there when the judgment come Still trains fixed I could not run Oh, I was there when judgment come Come for me, it will come for you So I've been writing some songs over the um, period of the last year. I bought myself a microphone and a trumpet. This is my pandemic gifts to myself. Um, using the microphone right now, and I, I'll spare you from my trumpet playing, which, you know, it kept me going. That's all I can say. And I can play one song. Um, it's a wonderful world. This is one of the songs that I wrote thinking of, uh, you know, just all the people I love out there and how much I miss you all and miss traveling to see you. I need your love to hold on to When the day is gone and the light turns blue my heart rings out like a bell for you I need your love to hold on to I need your love, I need your love I need your love when the day is gone and the light turns blue I need your love to hold on I need your 
love I would do anything if it's true And I need your love to hold on to First thing I do when the morning breaks your heart in two, and all the world has come undone, and I need your love, and you need my love, and you need my love, and I need your love, I need your love to hold on to. The day is gone and the light turns blue I need your love to hold on to I need your love to hold on to And you need my love and I need So I'm going to play one more song for you all, and uh, then I'm going to introduce my friend Kathy O'Callaghan, who's here with us tonight, um, from Hearts and Homes for Refugees. I wrote the, the record and uh, sung to Refugee and recorded it, and... Uh, I was pretty sure I was done, and then Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez came back from the border where she had toured a women's detention center, and she got to, uh, oh, there's a little dog back here. Come here, birdie. And uh, here she is. Here's a little bunny. Oh, good girl. Um, and so uh, she had toured a women's detention center and talked to the women there and said, you know, the women, I believed the women, I believed them, I believed them. And um, it struck me how important that is in general in life, but especially to uh, a population that is uh, traumatized and uh, looking for safety.
so with that, on that note, I'd like to introduce my friend Kathy O'Callaghan from Hearts and Homes for Refugees, a grassroots organization that just does incredible work with refugees. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're going to have a little conversation. Um, Kathy O'Callaghan. Hi, everybody. This is my friend Kathy O'Callaghan from Hearts and Homes for Refugees, and I'm just so happy that you're here with us. I am so happy to be here with you as always, Diana. It's my pleasure. And it's great to see you, to actually, oh. you know, we feel like we're in the same room a little bit. With your Reach fireplace. out and touch. Reach I out know. and touch each other. That's it's great. great. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was, I was listening to some of uh, the things you were saying online about Hearts and Homes, and um, so you started when 2015 was it 2015 it was a, a thought in the head and um it kind of grew from there yeah it's so amazing um the work you do and it's so grassroots which is what i think is is wonderful because yeah. it's like you know the community so say a little bit about how that works you know everybody's involved so that's exactly what it is diana it's a community of welcomers of volunteers, of people who believe that welcoming refugees is part of who we are as humans and as Americans. And we've been doing this a long time in this country and doing it very well. What we have not tapped into as much as I think that we can are the grassroots, the people who sit around the kitchen table as my friends and colleagues and um, neighbors did to talk about what can we do on a local level in this global refugee crisis? This was in 2015. And by 2016, we had welcomed the first refugee family to our community of Westchester County. And the goal was not just to welcome and help resettle this family of six from Syria, but to provide neighbors and friends and networks and resources to make sure that in their first year, they felt welcomed. They could integrate because of the support they'd received. And that's what we did. And that's what we continue to do. But the other part of what we do and is important is that we didn't want this to be a one and done. I wanted to make sure that others in these communities and the grassroots had opportunities to welcome refugees and to do that we had been doing. So Hearts and Homes for Refugees is here for the long term, and we inspire, educate, and equip others to do the same kind of welcoming. Mm, that's so wonderful. And, you know, just the idea that, you know, it benefits the community. Absolutely. I mean, the immigrant and refugee population has done that for centuries in America. And the fact that, you know, we've been so disconnected from that on some level and you're reconnecting it's really beautiful you know the song that i wrote the life i left behind is um yeah. about a syrian family that a friend of mine who came here um in the 80s and they came on um halloween and they spoke no english and they were in a small town in michigan in the suburbs and people started knocking on their door saying trick or treat and they were horrified and terrified and they were all hiding in the bedroom together because they didn't know what was going to happen because they just fled persecution you know and it's just it's interesting to hear about the refugee family from syria that just got settled there in this welcoming and loving and calm way as opposed to these you know to so many people who get thrown over here and uh you know left to their own devices so, um, yeah, let me think what would I was thinking today. Um, it's very hard to come to a country and to not know the language and not know the customs and the culture yeah. and how to get around. And there's so many differences that I mean, imagine if you were dropped in a country where you didn't speak the language and you didn't know the culture and your way around and the customs were different and what was acceptable practice in your country was not acceptable or frowned upon. Right. But those are really tough things we don't think about. And when you have neighbors like the volunteers in these community grassroots who hold your hand and help you walk through those doors and, and usher you into this new existence, it makes a difference. And I've heard 
so often from people who do this work, volunteers, that is the most rewarding volunteer work. And the most rewarding part of their lives is welcoming their new neighbors. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine. I can only imagine that. Um, you know, I wanted to do so much work in connecting with people over this uh, new record and haven't been able to, but I get my second shot on the 31st, so you might see me in Hastings sooner than later. <laughs> Hastings, uh, yeah, and we could see you in Hastings and Pelham. Yeah. Because, you know, we're in Pelham, New York, but we're all over Westchester County, which includes Hastings oh, and all the communities and all corners. And our goal is to be, you know, everywhere and for others to to um, do what we're doing. And it's happening. There is a growing grassroots movement across the country. And the value and the impact that communities can have is being recognized, not just at the community grassroots level, but finally by this administration and by funders yes. and supporters. And that's going to shift the paradigm of refugee resettlement in this country. Absolutely. And I think it's really, you know, great to think like, what, what can you do? You know, like yeah. even if it's something small or donating something or showing up for someone, or, you know, I saw that you were putting out something for people to help people drive, you know? Yeah. I mean, just the basics, like how do you yeah. get around a town? What's here? What are the laws? Yeah, it's wonderful. Right. So it's so great to have you. And, um, and you know, this is uh, the information's here. If you guys want to know how you can help, uh, this is a great place to start. So um, I've been very inspired by the work of Hearts and Hopes for Refugees. So thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Diana. Can I say one thing? Absolutely. Okay. I think that what's important is that the voices of grassroots and the actions and are so important. And Diana's, your spirit and your sincerity and understanding of the refugee story and your being the voice for them is so important to amplify this whole welcoming movement. And we know that stories are so important to better understanding and compassion. So thank you for what you do from the bottom of your heart. Hearts mm -hmm. and Homes for Refugees has been grateful and really loves you and your work. And um, I'm so glad that your year of 2021 is a renewal of hope and opportunity as well. Yeah, thank you so much. And, and I'm yeah. glad it is for all of us. My goodness. Oof. Yeah. We're moving on. Finally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'll see you soon. Thanks, Diana. Yeah. So this is called Santiago. Here I stand in my hand. As a rosary I'll lie on and take it A gift from my grandmother I was seven years old In a church in another life Many years ago My abuela made a home she taught me all I know The first day I remember Is the two of us She never met a stranger Or knew an enemy She went to heaven on Sunday The year I turned 18 Then came the killing and the fire We had to run, some didn't make it A little boy named Santiago Stayed by my side His mother's final words Were he's a good boy, you can see Take him all the way to a better life And don't let him cry
into days, turned into months to reach El Paso. And it was me and Santiago and the border guard. They asked us questions at the station and they took my rosary. I said, the boy is Santiago. Do not take it. I have never been a father, but I would like to be to this boy named Santiago. Do not take him, please. I promised his mother, do not take him. So Elizabeth Warren, <clears throat> during the summer of 2018, was our first elected official who went to the border and uh, reported back. Until that point, we had really, you know, they weren't even letting um, the press in to the detention centers. So Elizabeth Warren went with an interpreter and um, they wouldn't let her film inside the detention center. So she came out and recorded herself in the back of her vehicle, which I thought was brilliant, telling the story that she had just heard from a woman from Guatemala. Um, and this is her story. It's called Mama Hold Your Baby.
Hmm. Okay. So I um, I wrote this song. Uh, I guess it's really, <clears throat> really that my my sort of one true pandemic song. so swiftly as the hours move so slowly we stay apart together for the love for the love of one another as I wait for you as you wait for me round the corner of a hard time that none would disagree as we gaze ahead how we ache to see our dearest and our best there with all the rest we ever long to be back in good company How long, how long, in months and years, until the sadness disappears, to keep you safe, to be alone, when will I have your hand to hold? Disagree as we gaze ahead, how we ache to see our dearest and our best there with all the rest. We ever long to be back in good company. Without your clothes cannot replace my arms around you when we meet on that early morning street as I wait for you as you wait for me round the corner of a hard time that none would disagree gaze ahead how we ache to see our dearest and our best there with all the rest we ever long to be back in good company our dearest and our best there with all the rest we ever long to be back in good company Good company, good company. <laughs> so, this is the title cut. I'm so glad you guys got to hear Kathy tonight, and I hope you know. Some of us have not enough these days, and some of us still have more than we need. So if you uh, are looking for a place to donate, Hearts and Homes is a great place for that. So 
This is the title cut from the record. It's called Song to a Refugee. I have a friend in um, the Netherlands. <clears throat> His name is Harkin Kleinfelter. He's got a memoir coming out. Um, and he is a Dutch reform minister, and he's been doing social justice work since he was, you know, in, in school. He was, uh, he marched with Martin Luther King, and um, so, does his, so did his wife, Annalise Kleinfelter. That's how they met. And in their 80s, they went to the Isle of Lesbos and worked with the refugee community there. And they told me stories about the boats that came from Egypt. And that's where this uh, song came from. It's called, The Sea is My Mother. The boat was a belly alley inside. The storm came up, I did not cry The smell of sweat and engine fire Waiting through the darkest night The sea is my mother and she rocks me deep She calms the waves so I can sleep Dream of peace and something more Waiting on a day My sister dressed me as a man She gave me all the money she had She kissed my cheek, she pressed my hands Be quiet as a grave, quiet as you can See 
is my mother and she rocks me deep She calms the waves so I can sleep Dream of peace and something more Waiting on a distant shore Waiting on a distant shore The boat was a thief, the boat was a liar It sank beneath the deep black water Poor soul swimming somewhere under I tell my sister that I love her She is my mother and she rocks me a deep she calms the waves so I can sleep Dream of peace and something more Waiting on a distant shore She is my mother and she rocks me deep She calms the waves so I can sleep Dream of peace and something more Waiting on a distant shore Waiting on a distant shore Waiting on a distant shore Hmm I wrote this song in uh, Northampton, and for you locals, uh, it, I wrote it after a walk at the state hospital uh, grounds, a place that you'll know. And I was thinking of my grandfather. You know, sometimes there's that person, if you're lucky, there's that person in your life who loves you, and um, you know it no matter what, from no matter what distance. And uh, he had been ill <clears throat> the year that I, that I wrote it. I wrote it with him in mind. He was that person for me. It's called Pony. Oh, mm -hmm. 
dark and still if I listen with my heart I can almost hear that now hear it echo on the planet hear him whisper we can leave this world behind Some things I know for sure Like it's 1924 My daddy called me pony He locked me hand up So there is a song I would like to leave you with this evening. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I'll see you down the road of peace. Please stay safe. Um, and I can't wait to get on the road again, as the old song says. Yeah.
Thanks again for coming. Take care and be safe, and we'll see you next time.